Let's face it, most AI browsers aren't what they claim to be. They come with a lot of hype and honestly, they tend to be pretty underwhelming. When I heard about the browser company's Dia AI browser, I thought it was gonna be much of the same, especially since I've been a power user of the Arc browser for the past, I don't know, year and a half and I absolutely loved it. But when I discovered the features of the Dia browser I'm gonna share with you in this video here today, I've gotten obsessed with it. It's completely changed how I operate within my business and has also come in super handy in my personal life too. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Rick Mulready. And for the past 11 and a half years, I've run a multi seven figure online business, helping other online business owners grow and scale their business. Today, I run an AI community called the AI Playbook, where we help online business owners leverage AI so that you can streamline your business, make it more efficient and increase profit in the process and I'll link to the community in the description below. All right, so first, what is Dia? As I mentioned, this is the browser company's AI browser. It is not the AI version of the Arc browser. As much as I wish it was, it is not that. Currently, when I'm recording this video, uh, third week of July of 2025, it's free. There's rumors that there will be some sort of paid access to it at some point in the future, which makes sense because you pretty much have unlimited AI within the browser right now. And currently it's only available for Mac users, PC users, it's coming soon for you. I don't know exactly when, but my understanding is that it is coming. So this is the Dia browser. As you can see, it looks very different from other browsers out there. This is where you would put your URL if you wanna search something on the web. Uh, if I type something in here, this is also my AI chat. And so if I start typing in here, how can I do whatever, you'll see that you can chat with the AI to answer whatever question this is, or you can search on Google. You can set whatever default search engine that you want. I mean, this that isn't groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination. However, these are the other things that I think really set it apart and what I think is at the core of Dia. So first and foremost, you can chat with tabs. So you can ask questions about any open tab or highlighted text. And there's a couple different ways to do that. So number one, you can be in the search field here. You can do an at symbol to mention a tab or a website so you can scroll through and ask any question about any specific window that you have open. So that's the first thing you can do. By the way, you can, at the time recording this, they have rolled out the vertical tabs in the sidebar. So if you've been an Arc browser user, this is one of the things that most of us love about the Arc browser. It is not the same. They do have the, as you can see here, they do have the vertical browsing, or excuse me, vertical tabs. Uh, but again, it's it's not the same and doesn't act the same as Arc. But again, they're not trying to recreate Arc in an AI version, which I honestly think they, I would love to have seen them do that, but that is not the case. So this is the uh, CEO of the browser company and he just posted on Twitter or X and he's asking for people's opinion on whether this is something that they should ship or not. So again, talking to this tab here, I can do command E on my keyboard. So I can say, I don't understand what Josh is talking about with cursor friends. So I'm like, is it cursor the tool? Uh, so I can just ask that question uh, to the window here. So any window that you have open and you can just open up your AI chat bar here. Josh talking about giving each AI assistant. So it gives you the overview of what he's talking about, what it's why it's different, what's the point, the status, et cetera. So I'm like, oh, okay, I can read this now and totally understand what the heck he's talking about in this post because I was pretty confused. Now, the other thing too is like, if I wanted to, I could highlight a specific piece of text and you see when I highlight it down in the bottom in the AI chat box here, it pulls up that highlight. So I can ask a question specifically about that highlighted text. So another thing, I use that all the time. And so I don't have to leave the browser to go into ChatGPT or Claude or what have you. I can do all of my AI work for these types of things anyway, right here within the browser. Now I can also chat with attachments. So I can click on the plus button and I can upload from my computer. So I can upload PDFs, images, code files and ask questions about them right here with the uh, slider window. The other thing that you can do is you can personalize all of your interactions within 
idea. So for example, it's kind of like your custom instructions for ChatGPT. So you can turn on personalized answers, who inspires you or shapes your taste. And then you said, how do you best digest information? This is basically sharing a bit about you and your learning style. And I just kind of gave them an overview of me and how I like to consume things and learn and the type of writing it, it, it will do for me. The other thing you can do is let me go to a new tab. So I can also chat with the history, my browsing history for the past seven days. So all I have to do here is type in, you can see history. And so up to seven days. So I can just be like, I can type in, um, you know, what was that website I was looking at for a video editor? And it would pull up because I forget a lot of things, especially in my day to day. So this is a great way where you're like, I knew I, I know I looked at something and you can just pull up at history and ask questions and it'll it'll pull that up for you. So I love this about Dia. And another use case of this history um, feature here is I can say analyze my last seven days of browsing. So it's given me a really thorough analysis over what I've been working on over the past seven days. And I can also ask it to, you know, drill into specific opportunities I might not be thinking about or what have you. So it's a really cool yet simple use case that I love about Dia. So recently, for example, I was looking for an air purifier for my office because I have really bad allergies. And so I was looking at two different air purifiers on Amazon. And so what I can do is I can go over to uh, within Dia here, I can ask it, I can just at symbol, pull up those two tabs and I can ask it to um, do a comparison, which purifier is best for removing pollen from the air. And so now what it will do is it will read those two pages and then give me an analysis based on that question. And it says both, I mean, you saw how fast that was, right? So now it's giving me a complete breakdown of filtration technology, stuff I have no idea about, room coverage, performance. And then at the bottom here, um, it'll probably tell me, yeah, so it's for larger spaces, go with this one. For bedrooms, offices, go with this one. How quick was that? And so now I don't have to go through this page and you know read all the stuff and then flip over to here and do the exact same thing. I just did this in a matter of seconds and got exactly what I wanted. So I'm like, cool, I'll get that air purifier. The next core feature of Dia is its skills. And I use skills all the time now. It makes it so much faster and easier uh, in my workflows in the day-to-day -day business. So let me show you that. But first, yes, I know that the Perplexity Comet browser exists. Right now, not everybody has access to it, depending on when you're watching it. I have access to it. I've been using it to test it out. It has agentic capabilities, which currently the Dia browser does not. My understanding is that that is coming. Who knows? We'll see. I've tested Comet and I feel like it's really hit or miss at how effective it actually is. It does some, you know, some agentic things really, really well, but the other thing too is I'm overall not a fan of Perplexity's responses, its output. I like Dia so much better because I feel like even right now, and Dia's in beta, Dia has the right amount of AI and it's already super useful. Okay, so Dia skills, as I mentioned, this is core to the functionality and the types of things that you can do in the Dia browser. These things down here are skills where it says write and code. I like to access these through the little down arrow right here. You'll see all the skills. So you can also build your own skill. It's it's sort of built in GPTs that you can use right within the, the browser. So I've been testing out Tana, the tool, but copying and pasting prompts into Tana is not easy. It breaks for some reason when you use XML tags, for example. So I just created this simple little skill where I just type in forward slash TPF and it formats the prompt and removes all the XML so that I can then just paste it into Tana really, really easily. Another example of a skill that I really like is their write skill. This is right out of the box. It, but this is where you can customize and tell Dia how, you know, this is where you can give it your tone of voice, your writing style. So whatever it's writing, it sounds like you. So for example, if I wanna go over here and I can click on the write skill, write an email to so-and-so, uh, about whatever topic. And it will write the email in my voice 
based on whatever I've asked it to, to write about. So it's built right in here. I don't have to leave Dia to go over to Claude or to ChatGPT or what have you. I can do it right here. Another cool use case that you can do with Dia skills is you can use Dia and the AI chat to talk to YouTube videos. So you can ask questions about any YouTube video that you want. So in addition to that, for me, what I like to do is when I'm publishing a new YouTube video, I will publish it, I will mark it as private, and the transcript will be developed by YouTube. So then what I could do is I could set up a skill to uh, get the timestamps. Um, a keyboard shortcut says, give me a list of the video's chapters, begin each chapter with a timestamp range for, this is exactly how I get the timestamps now for the videos. And in a matter of seconds, gives me the timestamps. I'll clean it up, obviously, but then I can just copy it open it uh, in my description and put the timestamps right there in the description. So it makes it super, super useful. This actually allowed me to remove this whole other Chrome extension I was using at the time, also for Arc, that I was paying monthly for. So I got to get rid of that because this actually works so much better. Another skill that I use a lot is what I call the reflect skill. And I believe I got that skill from this website here, which I'll link to in the description below. So you just find whatever skill that you want, click the down arrow and you can copy this into a new skill. So you just come over here again, click the drop down, click new skill, come down here, paste it right here, run the following prompt, give it prefix. So basically a keyboard shortcut and you can run that whenever you want. So for example, I can do that forward slash reflect. And let's just say I wanna combine it with my browsing history. It's going to give me questions to think about based on browsing history analysis that we looked at earlier. So it's asking me open-ended questions, reflective questions inspired by the recent browsing. I mean, this just allows me to go deeper and look at and analyze the types of things that I've been doing in the business over the past week or so. Again, just get creative as you want with these skills that you can create. Again, this site has a whole bunch of them. Uh, Dia itself has, yeah, so they have a, they have a gallery also. They break it down by uh, these categories here. There's not a lot here, but they're, they're decent. So for example, if you want to go in here and look at uh, Dan Shipper's writing style guide. So here is the, here's their huge prompt. Again, it's acting as a GPT. Another example that I could do here is, so this is based on Dan Coe's strategies, which I, I, I like a lot, running a really lean team and lean business. He's got his content repurposing strategy. So essentially what I could do is I can highlight this. I can come over to chat with a document. And because I've highlighted this, again, it shows up in my in the chat box here, you know, I could enter transcription, for example, of a YouTube video, and I could say, give me a newsletter based on this transcript or extract key points for social media threads, or better yet, I can create a skill to do these things for whatever piece of content that I put in here, whether it's in, um, you know, whether I wanna be talking to a piece of content, if you will, that I have up on the screen, or, if I go to a new tab and I do it right from here. Lastly, because we're getting into AI browsers, privacy is a big concern, right? So I would encourage you to check out their privacy policy. I'll link to it in the description below. But essentially the data that is yours is living on your computer. And as with most AI models and so forth, your data is only shared when needed, essentially when you are using the AI portion of the browser, which is exactly why you wanna be using it, right? Because of the AI that's built right into it. So you can go through and read through their privacy policy. It's pretty uh, extensive here. They also link to the few the, uh, the full policy. But overall, I love the Dia browser so far. It's helping me make things so much easier, faster. And by the way, I realize I'm only scratching the surface already in the few weeks that I've been using the Dia browser of what it can actually do. I didn't like it at first, but I really like it now. It is helping my workflows and simplifying things and making things so much easier that I can do it right here within the browser. This is this is where things are going in terms of browsers and integrating the AI experience. And I really hope that they do add agents or agentic behavior to the browser. I'll link to how to get on the wait list for Dia. I know plenty of people who have gotten on the wait list and then like the next day you get access to it. If you're an Arc user already, you will get immediate access to 
uh, Dia. So again, I'll include those links in the description below. Also, if you wanna join us inside the AI Playbook community and you're an online business looking to leverage AI to streamline and increase profit in the process, I'll link to the community in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching, appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.